Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Mario and today we will be revisiting the GoWise USA air fryer oven. Stick around. So when I bought my air fryer oven, uh, it was new. It just came out. It was like $220 and uh, they had a special running with a coupon and I got it for $200 shipped. Um, those prices have gone way down since then. Now you can get it for $130 if you look on Amazon. But one of the accessories they sent me at no cost because I was a pre-order was this accessory kit. And it comes with a 6.3 quart air fryer basket, a toast rack, and an eight inch pan. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that air fryer basket to see how well it compares with my original, you know, Go Wise USA 5.8 quart air fryer. So the air fryer oven will still hold a little more capacity, but is underpowered a little bit compared to the regular air fryer. Air fryer formation, switch on. Okay, so here I got my chicken wings. I already cut them in half, and I meant to leave one to show you what I usually do, but here you have the wing, and I cut the tip off here, and just discard that and then I cut the wing in half at the joint so you have the wing and the little drumlet as I like to call it. Okay, next we are gonna get our eggs cracked. We got two eggs here. I didn't add salt to this because the Kentucky Colonel season flour has plenty of salt. And now we'll add the chicken. Give this a quick mix. All right, and here's the magic that's gonna make it happen, the Kentucky Colonel seasoned flour. I'm gonna put some in the bottom here. I'm gonna put about four pieces of chicken in. Put a little more flour on top. Cover this up. And at the request of one of the users, I did put a pad underneath here because when I set this bowl down, it makes a loud clank. All right, we're on our way. I have a video of me going through this whole process. Um, I usually put uh, three coats on here and you wait five minutes between each coat. And after the final coat, you would stick it in the refrigerator for about half an hour. And that's to let the flour settle. If you do not put it in the refrigerator for at least a half an hour, what's gonna end up happening when you put it in the air fryer, the flour is gonna stop blowing around everywhere. This is gonna help it set. Someone had asked me, uh, a day or so ago that they want to buy an air fryer for their daughter or daughter-in-law as a gift but that she probably wouldn't have the patience to coat this you know two three four times or whatever the case is you do not have to coat this three four times the more coatings you put on it the crispier it's going to be the crunchier it's going to be but by no means do you have to do that However, the 30 minute rule in the fridge still stands. Okay, the first coat is on. We are gonna wait five minutes and recoat. Okay, these have been sitting for about five minutes. You can see how they yellowed up. So let's get coat number two on there. And here's a comparison between the one I just floured and the other ones. As you can see there's quite a difference. And that's coat number two. Five minutes more, coat number three. Okay, this is what coat number two looks like after five more minutes. Let's get the final third coat on there. Okay, and this is the third and final coat. And most important part is now it is going to sit in the refrigerator for at least a half an hour. Okay, let's take a closer look of what's inside of this three-piece accessory kit little thank you card with what comes with it and what you would use it with nothing otherwise other than the cardboard it comes in it's not very well packed so as long as it comes in another box you're all set uh, here's more explaining the kit and on the back there is a 10% off code oh no that's all right it's probably the same code everybody would get my guess and uh, just an explanation of how you use things and never pour oil in the square accessory basket. This could result in personal injury. And uh, no, you wouldn't pour it, but you could spray it in there. So we got our square pan here. We have the toast rack. And actually, this toast rack is much more substantial 
than the one I bought with my original Go Eyes air fryer. And we have the basket, which uh, feels kind of thin. There are no rubber bumpers on the bottom here, but then again, it wouldn't need it because it'll sit on the sliding shelf. And we have the handle. So, how do they expect you to do this one-handed? All right, so I guess you kind of put it on like this, slide it in, pop it out. I'm not sure I like that method, but in order to take it out, you'd have to slide this in underneath. Granted, this would be on the shelf so it wouldn't stick up, and you kind of pop it up. I would have preferred a different mechanism, even if there were two loops here, maybe, so you could just kind of slide it in and slide it out. It just, this seems kind of tough to deal with, especially if it's hot. You're more likely to get a splash from that. And again, this doesn't feel too heavy duty. I want to get the toast rack that came with my GoWise Air Fryer 5.8 quart and compare it to this one. That's quite a difference. And I was talking to Kirby recently. He was cooking some ribs and uh, his air fryer. And I says, hey, how about if you uh, you know, put it in the toast rack? He says, it's too thin. I says, well, you could cut every other one. But looking at this, it is kind of thin. But, you know, depending on how thick the racks are, once you, I pressure cook my ribs, but once you put them in here, you could stick them in there. This also has nice little silicone feet on it which is kind of nice because the one that came with the GoWise did not and that has the potential of scratching the coating. So it looks like they did make an improvement there. All right, let's get this washed and cooking. Okay, let's compare the baskets. This is a 5.8 quart basket according to GoWise and this is the 6.3 quart basket. So we put them close together and they're about identical in height. Um, you know, we're talking fractions of a millimeter difference. Now let's look at the bottoms. Place this upside down, put this here. Um, the GoWise 5.8 quart basket is a little bit uh, deeper. It's also a little bit wider. Um, the other thing is the basket for the GoWise air fryer oven is square. So that technically gives you a little more room. However, that being said, it's not as wide or deep. I also feel GoWise missed the mark on this for a few reasons. This edge is sharp. When I went to wash this for the first time, I actually kind of uh, could have probably easily cut myself. And that's not good because the air fryer basket, as you know, has this nice rounded edge. I really hope this is something GoWise addresses in their version 2. More on version 2 later because I did talk to GoWise. Um, the other thing, and that I really feel they missed the mark on. First of all, this is really thin. Thinner, in my opinion, than the basket. But do you see these little lips here? This is so you could put a shelf inside. But I can assure you, none of the accessories that came with this air fryer kit will fit in here. Also, if you look at any of the wire mesh baskets or shelves, they don't fit there either. So, I'm not sure what the reasoning is for that. It would have been in GoWise's best interest to have included a shelf that would sit right in here so you could cook two layers of food. You could cook the chicken on the bottom, fries on the top, you know, things of that nature, or veggies, or whatever the case is. Again, this basket, I think, is poorly constructed, sharp edges, and missing the mark with not having a shelf inside. These are one of the suggestions I'm making to go wise when I talk to them is somehow making this counterbalance. I would not want the door to swing open from left to right or right to left. I think down is best, but I do think this needs some sort of counterbalance or spring. A lot of the accessories do store in here. Uh, what does not store in here would be the basket or some of the rotisserie accessories. And here are the mesh screens. Again, I've complained these being on the thin side. Uh, this is what I cooked the chicken on last time, and uh, one of these is the broken one from last time. Yeah, right here. But, I mean, I'm not going to throw it away. It will have some use. Now, here is the air fryer basket. Here is the handle. Prepare to be amazed. I can't believe they did this. This does not latch 
anywhere into the system. You just kind of stick it in there. What the heck is that? And so you take this out, you close the door to cook, right? What happens when you need to take this out? What, what are you going to stick your hand way in there and squeeze this and do that and then pull it out? Plus, you do not want this basket sitting down. These are going to ruin the surface on the drip tray. So it says nothing in the manual about this. However, I have to make the assumption that this is going to go in here and this is going to sit on top. Realistically, that's the only way this is going to work. And again, it, it, it's got me puzzled. I think I'm going to turn this upside down and I'll explain why in a minute. And I'm also going to see if I can raise this up a little bit. No, so this has to be definitely on the bottom shelf. And the reason why I put it downwards is because it'll let it sit just a smidge lower and maybe let it balance back and forth. No, so this, wow. <laughs> I don't know what to say here. Um, I don't know what the go Eyes was thinking or really the manufacturer. Because again, there's a company out there that design this, market it, and they sell it. The Go Eyes, uh, Todd English, it's the identical model, and uh, this is like a Gen 2 product. Um, I can't, I, I really cannot understand the thought process behind this. You know, it can vibrate around, it's probably going to make a lot of noise, even though there'll be weight in there. And when you want to disconnect the handle, you know, want to reconnect, you got to kind of squeeze this in. I think the design could have been far better here. Okay, enough complaining for now. Let's start to cook. Okay, so we got a total of uh, 24 pieces or 12 wings. So first things first, I'm gonna spray these baskets and it's gonna make a mess. Cause of course there's holes in these things. I guess that's the one benefit of this pan is, uh, you know, it's got a bottom to it. it is what it is. So first things first, I am gonna put uh, even amounts of wings and the drumlets in there. However, believe it or not, the Go Eyes air fryer, the original, is fitting more easier because it's a little wider. There is 12 there, and there is 12 there. See if we can't get both of those in frame. Okay, we can't forget to spray oil here. Same here. Another mention, since there is no base here, a lot of uh, the oil is getting through. But on a positive note, I'm supposed to oil this board every so often. So I guess uh, that's all right. So let's uh, open this up. I'm not going to use the handle because everything is cold. I am not going to preheat it because these weren't preheated to begin with for the last test. Okay, for the oven, we are going to put this on chicken it wants to do 430 at 25 i think that's a little high to be honest to start anyway i'm gonna go 400 i'll leave it at 25 the oven i am gonna go 400 and i'm gonna do 12 and the reason for that is that's probably around the time i'm gonna check and flip or maybe a couple of minutes beforehand okay we got eight minutes going let's take a look these look like they could use another minute or so, but I'm gonna actually respray it a little bit. Let's take a look at the oven. And I'll mention that I had this upside down. I was like, that's weird, it goes in with two screws, but it makes sense to me. It's easier to put it in this way, but really you're supposed to put it in this way, squeeze it and put it in, according to the book. I don't like that, the way that feels. And this looks just about the same as the oven. Excuse me, the uh, regular air fryer, I'm just going to hit a couple of spots. Yeah, I like it using it better upside down, to be honest with you. One other thing I'm going to do is I am actually going to raise the temperature to 430. That was what the preset was for the chicken to begin with, because with the Breville, I know you have to cook at a higher temperature and longer. So I decided to let this go because it does look like it's still cooking a little slower than the Go Wise air fryer. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. Those are looking good. You're gonna flip those. Okay, you're gonna respray them. Put those back in. And we're gonna raise the time up. It's been in there for 10 minutes. 
so I'm gonna raise this up to six, so that will give it a total of 16. It's probably too long, but that's where we're gonna start. All right, with the oven, let's pull this gate out a little bit. Again, I prefer to use this handle upside down, it seems. I also wanna point out that these wings were still partially frozen. This shut down automatically the fan. Let's get these sprayed, especially those white spots. And here we run into problem number one. This fell out. Again, that's probably more my fault because I should have not slid that out. Let's get this pan back in there. Close it up. It's gonna start up automatically. Pull this forward. 12 minutes left. I think for the other one we were doing another six minutes. So I'm gonna change the time here. Six minutes. Okay, 14 minutes on the Go Eyes air fryer, and those look done. I'm gonna let those cool down. I'm gonna unplug this air fryer. I'm gonna take a quick peek here at the oven. Those look like they need another minute. I will check it with the thermometer though. Just another minute or so, and we should be done there as well from taking out some of these wings. I already see what I'm eyeballing in there drumsticks. Yeah, all right. Put those in. Move these aside, gonna let those sit anyway. So I think for next time, if there's a next time for me cooking wings in this, uh, 430 is definitely gonna be the setting I use. That seems to be the only way this can compete time-wise and crispy-wise. And crispy, I can't say yet, I'm just making an assumption. So we are going to flip down this door. Again, I seem to like using this handle upside down. They do not look as crispy, but we want to look for, is it done? Internal temperature is good. So I am going to back this up a little bit. And uh, this is where I got to try to figure out what to do here. I honestly don't want to sit this on top there because nubs that are on the bottom could scratch that surface so let's pull out the wings here pull out two of each of the wings and a couple more of the drums I'm gonna grab a small one since that's what I grabbed on the other I grabbed two small of each And I noticed, as a side note, by flipping them on here, I now have crumbs inside the base of the door here. And those are not going to be fun to clean. I'll have to wait till it's fully cooled down and maybe put the vacuum nozzle in there or something because I do not want those crumbs sitting in there. Okay, and we're going to unplug this oven as well. And here we go. And I'm sure if I was to spin this around before I showed it to you, you would know which is which. This is the Go Eyes USA Air Fryer. And this is the Go Wise USA air fryer oven. But let's test them and see how it works out. Okay, there we go. A little close up of the camera. Looking at these, there's no confusing what came off of what plate. So, what I am going to do is try a wing from the Go Wise USA air fryer. Man, again, crispy on the outside. They look crispy, but. Moist and delicious on the inside. I'm gonna stop all that here for a second. I make my own Kentucky Colonel type uh, seasoning flour, uh, but it was just convenient. I'm still working off a case I bought. But one thing I like to add to mine, or you can even add it to the Kentucky Colonel seasoned flour, is adding in some Parmesan cheese and mixing that up. Now I'm going to try a wing from the Go Wise USA air fryer oven. This looks like the more crispier one. Okay, still delicious, moist on the inside, not really crispy on the outside. Like I said, good, but not the same. Um, 
the results may have been different if I left it at 4.30 from the start, but I only let it go five minutes before I switched it. So I'm not gonna say that that's the reason why. The air fryer, I think I said it cooked 14 minutes, probably could have cooked 13. The GoWise air fryer oven. Um, it cooked it, it took a little two minutes longer and it wasn't as crisp. The oven, I probably could have left it at 4.30. It would have sped up the cook time, maybe made it a little more crisp. I don't know, that's a good question. However, um, it kind of resembles the test I did last time, although this time it seemed to have cooked a little better, and that was probably because of the higher temperature. So, what do I think? Um, I've done kebabs now a few times with the GoWise USA air fryer oven. However, that's probably the only thing I would cook in it now is rotisserie. So you'll have to ask yourself. Now again, I paid, uh, this was I think 220 when it came out and I got it for 200 and then they said, we're gonna give you the free accessory kit. Right now, I think you can get the oven on Amazon for $130 and with the accessory kit that I got for maybe it was 170. So the price has improved like drastically. Um, if you only could have one and you didn't have a toaster or a toaster oven, I guess you would go with the Go Ice USA air fryer oven. However, if you have uh, an, uh, you know, a toaster oven or a toaster, I honestly don't see a real compelling reason to go with the Go Ice USA air fryer oven unless you love doing rotisserie. I'm gonna be doing a chicken rotisserie soon, so I wanna see how that turns out because I've cooked a five pound chicken in my regular air fryer and it came out phenomenal. Um, um, so I'm curious how it would come out in the oven. Uh, the basket, you know, it's supposedly 6.3 quarts versus 5.8. I questioned that test. It could actually be better if they included that little shelf I talked to you about earlier at the beginning of the video or somewhat into the video. Uh, I, again, I'm torn. Uh, I will say GoWise USA, uh, the support people have been awesome. Uh, when I had the issues, they took care of it. I also contacted them recently about my thoughts on the design and uh, things like that. And they were interested in hearing what I had to say because uh, they say uh, after they go to have a new batch of these ovens made, they calling it version two. And I told them I would love to contribute my ideas of what I thought could be done to improve the idea. And they said, absolutely. And um, they put me in contact with someone to talk about it. Whether those ideas get implemented is another question. However, I'm hoping there's some good feedback and uh, they decide to implement some of the fixes that I talked about to make it a better product. Um, again, the air fryer basket, it's kind of, it really should have been designed to kind of slide on the shelves. Maybe this was kind of a basket for an older generation oven or someone else's oven. They said, hey, this is good enough. You know, they badge it and they put it in. I think that should have been a better thought out. Like I said, the edges were sharp. You go to wash that. At some point in time, you are going to cut yourself. I can guarantee it. Um, so that's pretty much where we stand there. Uh, otherwise, the food came out okay. But again, my GoWise USA Air Fryer, the regular one, I think it still does the better job. Um, so, like I said, unless you need to run out and buy one device that does all, you know, the GoWise USA Air Fryer will be probably the best thing. However, that being said, as you know, I have the Breville Smart Oven Air. I am gonna bet you anything, a brand new air fryer, I'll bet you, that Breville will probably soon announce an updated version of the Smart Oven Air. I bet you they're gonna have a Smart Oven Air rotisserie. When that happens, I am gonna get rid of one or two of my air fryers and I am gonna get rid of the GoWise USA air fryer oven and the Breville I have behind me. So when that happens, I'll get rid of three things, maybe more, and buy the new oven, but I will get rid of this first, hopefully, when that happens, because I don't have the room for more, and I want less in the kitchen. Anyway, I know this was a long video extended, but I really like these kind of videos, because it gives you my real deep thoughts on what I think of a piece of equipment, because there's the one thing is, there's people out here who trust me to give a review and not just say, oh, look, Mario got, you know, uh, an air fryer from GoWise. Uh, I want to give you the truth because when it comes down to it, if I don't give you an honest 
review or opinion of a product, it doesn't make me look good. And the last thing I want is for you not to trust what I say, because I am gonna be as honest as possible with you about what I have here. And I think I've done that to date. Uh, so anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell so you know when I put out a new video and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. I already unplugged both air fryer folks. Back to that chicken. That's good. Should probably let them know it's done too. Come and get it. You wanna pick your chicken out? Yeah, chicken, chicken. Uh. Thank you. All right. Chicken. We're gonna have something else with that. It's not just chicken. <laughs>